Hello, YouTube. So you're a game developer, you're working on your dream game, you're working on a project alone, you're working on a project with friends, you got all these ideas cooking up, but you're just gonna make the game and put those ideas in as you go along, right? Wrong. That would be stupid because it's gonna take you months to maybe years to make your game and uh, you're not gonna be able to organize all those thoughts correctly. You're not gonna be able to track all that work. You're not gonna know when things were implemented and you're not gonna know how to structure your ideas into an actual cohesive game. But there's a lot of tools out there that help you do this and manage your project from start to finish. So we're gonna talk about a couple of those and more specifically, we're gonna be talking about a few that I use personally every single day. So let's talk about some of my favorite ones. Let's just jump into it. Okay, so this one, everyone has heard of. If you've watched any game developer YouTubers, you've seen them do this in their devlogs, you've seen this everywhere. This is called Trello, it's free. It's good to use if you're a solo developer, it's great to use if you have team members, and all you kind of do in Trello is set up cards. So I can make a list here and I could have this called like in progress or something like that, right? I can create a card with a title and then add a bunch of details to it. So maybe I could do like, I don't know, uh, implement player movement or something like that. So now I have this card here. I can make another list called like complete. And when I finish this, I could click and drag it into the complete column and then I just have a simple workflow. And then once you actually click on these cards, you see all this information here. You know, you can add some context to what you're trying to do here. You can make a checklist, you know, like make prefab, make script. I, this is dumb, but like you could basically have these things out and then you could be like, oh, I did this and I'm 50% done. And uh, now I'm done with it. You can add labels, you can add people to it. You can add all your documentation, like your design documentation, anything like that. Maybe you drew up a quick little sketch, a little mock-up of what you want something to look like, like some UI elements and you attach that here. Um, and this is really useful if you're working not just with yourself, but like with other people. Um, and so you could have like a whole thing here. You could have like a QA list here. You could have like a known bugs list here, right? And you just make a whole bunch of cards. If you're following something like an agile project management workflow, that means nothing to you. Don't worry about it. You know, maybe you'll load up cards for the next two weeks in a sprint of what you want to get done. And then you can basically make a list of your sprints of what you got completed. And then you can archive those lists and do things like that. So this is a great free tool for you to use. Everyone uses this for a reason, especially for small projects. This is key. But in professional settings and AAA settings, you don't really use Trello. You kind of use uh, more expensive, larger options like Jira or Azure DevOps or Asana to name some but you don't actually need to really be using these. Even if you have a team of like six, seven, eight, even probably like 10 people, there are like pricing tiers and you can probably get one for cheaper. I know they offer like some free options, but they're pretty limited. So I'm not even gonna really cover those. We're just gonna be thinking about like small beginner type indie dev teams that are focused more on free to free with maybe some pricing upgrades. So I mentioned Azure DevOps and I mentioned things like Jira and these are good for like large teams and more of a professional setting. But if you wanted to illustrate something like that with a smaller team that was like a free option or even a really cheap option at some of the paid pricing tiers, then there's a great open source cool known as shortcut and so shortcut has you know the aspects of Trello where you can make cards so I could create what's called a user story here and this could be a similar thing right like create player movement or something like that um, but you get a lot more team breakdown here you have all these tabs on the right hand side where you can break this down into epics so maybe the epic would be like player movement and there's a hundred different user stories underneath this epic. You could assign this to like the backend team as opposed to like the design team or like the product team or your art team or you know, however your team's really structured or your QA testing team. And so you could create stories and then in here what you could do is basically create an iteration, which is known as like a sprint. So this could be like sprint one uh, and you could give it a start and end date. So I'll just say like today to next week or whatever. And so going back to this create player movement story we just made a second ago, I can go to iteration and assign it to sprint one. And then if I go here, you'll notice this is now in our sprint that's slotted from March 20th to March 31st. So this is again, really useful if you have a team. So you might have, let's say 10 art tickets in this sprint, like create the user art, create these, you know, level one art assets, create this, create that. You have your engineering team. And so they're actually gonna create and implement player movement, create the building blocks of the first level, whatever tools you might need. But you can have all this in a sprint. You can make a whole backlog of user stories. And then when this iteration's done, you can basically come in, fill out your whole next sprint, 
assign it off to people, etc. Um, and so there's a lot more utility in Shortcut. Some of them are restricted by pricing tier plans, but they're not too bad. I think if I had a small team with like more than two or three people, so like four plus, uh, this is what I would use absolutely, especially if they were like different fields. I think you could kind of get away with using Trello for if it was just like you and a buddy or definitely yourself. I think you don't really need Shortcut, but it is really nice. And this is more of like a traditional professional software approach to Agile or whatever you want. Like this is what you'll see more in a professional setting. Okay, so those are more like project managing things. What if you want something just like quick and simple? Um, and this is more for like organizational of ideas. And I use these also all the time. So moving on to our next one, this one's called Notion. So here we go, Notion's kind of like a journal that you can set up with teams or a personal thing and you can basically make a ton of really, really detailed documented pages with links to each other and things like that. So I could have, you know, a new page here on my Notion and this is free and again, you can invite people to your project as well, like a bunch of people. So I could have this called like, I don't know, my game, right? So I have this like blank page here and if I type slash, you'll see all these different blocks, they call it, of things you can like put onto your page. So you have text, obviously, tables, headings, lists, dividers. You could link to other pages and I'll show you how to make those in a second. You know, you can mention different people in your team. You can put in all these really intricate views like a calendar view, right? Like I think I have one here. I don't even use this, but here's like an example. You might have like a calendar set up with your next month's work of progress or your week or whatever. I could create a page here, right? I could just make one and call this like design document, blah, 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 whatever. And then I have this page underneath my game. And so like from this my game thing, I could literally just click here. And so this tool is excellent for like organizational purposes. And you can have like a similar structure to Trello where you set up um, like cards and boards, that's definitely possible in this. It's not what I use it for. I'd rather just use Trello because it's quicker for me. Um, but I would actually put all my ideas. So I have a game idea. I compile all the, like, the brainstorming ideas. I have like this whole art section. I have like an enemy section. You just kind of organize every single aspect of your game or your project into these things. And then you can also set up like a schedule and a structure and like, roles and responsibilities of your team, all that stuff. You can put it in here. Notion offers a lot of utility. So I'm not gonna go through all of it here or even much of it, but it's free. So I definitely recommend checking it out if you've never seen it. It's really, really useful. And again, something I use outside of games as well. I use it for YouTube. So that was Notion, it's really cool. The next one I wanna to talk to you, again, in the same vein of like organizing ideas is one of my favorites. It's called Workflowy. I don't know if you ever heard of it, but Workflowy is literally just bulleted lists. I will say I've never had to pay for this. They do have like, if you pay, you get an unlimited amount of bullets you can make. So it is monthly capped, but every month you get more bullets you can make. And what you really do is, um, so let's say I had like a new game idea. And I wanted to talk about like characters and story and art needed and uh, game mechanics. And then I can go into each one of these two and make more lists. So I could say like character one, character two, etc. And then I could even go into this one and say like uh, backstory, I don't know, design, abilities, things like that. Right, and then you can, I think you guys kind of get it. And then you can even go into it further, like he was born, blah, 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 blah. And then you can collapse these. I could focus on this if I only wanted to see the characters. I could literally click on this and then it, it kind of refocuses the hierarchy. So now characters is the top uh, and you can kind of go into here, maybe backstory here, you have like a bunch of bullets. Um, and then you can kind of like click back to the top. So this is literally just bulleted lists. This is kind of how my mind structured inherently. So this is really, really useful. I use this a lot. And again, this is not just like programming related. I use this kind of just to organize things in general. Um, and it, it's kind of neat because you can also like click and drag and move things around. You can move bullets to other uh, categories. It's a really powerful tool if you kind of like the idea of bulleted lists. Again, another one you can use for free, so it's worth trying out and see if you like it. Okay, and now last but not least, there's so many I could cover, um, but these are ones that I actually use. I wanna show you one more I use for like quick things. If I'm just like, oh, I need to do this, and then I just need to like mark it down, and I don't wanna have like something so set up. Uh, it's more like a to-do checklist, and it's called Todoist. You might have heard of it. Again, this is something I use 
every day, just for things I have to get done in a day. So this is to-do list on desktop. I have this on my phone. I think that's like the best use case for it. It's just like, oh, I need to do this. And then you pull out your phone and just do something quick. Let's say you just had some like an idea that you need to get done today. Like, oh, I want to make this game. I need to research something. So what you can do is you can just make a task. So I can just hit add task. And then let's say I put in like research 3D character controller. I don't know. That's something I want to do today. I have it set to tomorrow because I actually have today listed out, but it'll basically just list them out. So I can make another one like make art for character one or something. Um, and then it's really simple. If you don't do them, you can just drag them to another day. And if you do, you literally just check it off and it goes away. And so you just basically want to make sure you do all your tasks for the day and check them off. And so this is more for like immediate small things. It might even be like make a card for character movement in Trello or whatever, one of the other ones that you've been using. This is just like a reminder. And I look at this all the time. And if you don't do them, it'll like email you and you can change your notification settings, but it'll be like, hey, you didn't do this today. Um, so it kind of is just like a good way to remind you to do stuff you need to get done that you just like thought of and was like, oh yeah, I didn't do that. So those are a couple project management tools that I use literally every single day. I think they're really valuable for yourself, for game development, for a small team, for whatever. All of them are free. Some of them have more benefits and more utility or have some limitations if you don't pay and they have options too but you don't need to. I've never paid for any of these and I still have been able to use them for years, some longer than others, but it's definitely worth trying at the very least to see if you like it. Like maybe you hate bulleted lists and workflow is garbage for you, but maybe you actually really like Trello and Todoist actually turns out to be pretty helpful. So give them a try. Like the video if you thought these were helpful. I, I'm really interested in knowing what people use already for their projects. So comment down below if you use anything. You know, I'm, I'm sure we'd all love to know more about what's out there. These are again, just ones I've used. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.